Now in this video, we'll discuss some of the layer two and layer three marking, uh, which are available in the Cisco iWays. So before we go ahead with the marking options, let us quickly revise what we have discussed in the previous sections. Now we have seen some basic introduction to classification. Classification is a method of differentiating the traffic into different groups by using class maps. Now using class maps, we are differentiating the uh, video traffic, maybe, maybe a separate classification and we are differentiating the voice traffic and also your data traffic, something like that. Now once we differentiate the traffic by using the class map, the next method we have seen is something called marking. Now marking is a method of writing the information over a packet. It can be a layer two marking or layer three marking depends uh, whether it is going in your layer two technology like in the switching or in the routing con route, it's going via routers or not. Uh, where this particular marking helps, helps the remote devices to get identified. So when you are sending the information, it's going to be sent with some marking and the remote device is going to identify based on that marking and it's going to give the treatment like whether it is a high priority traffic or low priority traffic based on the marking option. Now one of the major advantage we get with the marking is we don't need to, when the packet comes, it doesn't need to check the complete packet and it, it always allows you to save the processing on the particular router. Now the marking can be done either it can uh, in the layer two or layer three, like if we're using some layer two technologies like, uh, especially in the switching concepts, we use something called CVS class of service, which is used in the layer two LAN. And we use something called exp MPLS experimental bits. If, it is, if you're running some MPLS core networks or frame delay discard eligibility bits, uh, we use in case, in case of frame delay. Now we refer this as layer two markings, or it can be a layer three markings as it goes from router to router. IP presidents and DSCP or the two different marking options we have in the layer three. Now this marking information will be added as inside your packet here. Like if you're using a layer two header, maybe your switch networks, we have three bits reserved for class of service and, or it can be a dot one queue. In case of dot one queue, we have a priority tag which is going to use the three bits of class of service again. And if you're using a layer three packet, the IPv4 packet, you have, you have a field called type of service, which is going to be eight bits, which is used to mark that particular information. So we'll be seeing those, uh, what are the different marking options we have? Like what are the specific categories in the marking? So first thing we'll start up with a layer two marking. Now in the layer two marking, now, if you're using a dot one q encapsulation you have a field called priority bit which is going to be three bits and that three bits is going to define a class of service that's what we call as a class of service cvs value and based on this particular three bits we get eight different combination values like you can either use 000, 000 001 that is the equivalent conversion it can be one two three four five six and seven now out of these seven values like zero is the best effort data. Now it's, it's like no marking. So all your traffic, which you don't want marking, it will be referred as a best effort data where it, where the device will try its best to forward this particular information. Now, whereas if you, uh, if you have some other traffic like low priority data, like FTP traffic, you can mark with the value of one, which will be considered as a low priority value. Then two, now here the higher number is more preferable, means nothing but it's a high priority traffic. So when any marking is coming with a value of zero, which means it is the least priority traffic and any, any traffic is coming with a layer two marking uh, with, a, with a value of seven is considered as a high, high priority traffic. Now higher the number, it's going to be higher the priority. Now it's all depends upon our requirement. We can use any one of these markings, but typically we use something called medium priority traffic like FTP, we generally consider to be marked as one value uh, you can use something called high priority traffic like uh, maybe your time sense to replication between the servers or some Citrix servers. We prefer to use some high priority traffic. And, and the priority value of three, three is something we can use for control signals on your VoIP like, like hold, hold option or the ring, the controlling signals inside your voice. And for the video conferencing, like real time broadcast video applications, you can use a marking of four and five is something we can use for voice with VoIP traffic. So specifically we'll be using any one of this marking from zero to five, 
based on the cost values because the last two values are reserved for specific control traffic. Like in case of layer two, it can be reserved for spanning tree or VTP based messages. It's, or it can be for routing protocols, updates, network traffic. So it's going to be reserved for that. So in general, when, when we define any cost value, we give the marking from zero to five. Okay, whereas phi is referred as very high priority traffic, whereas zero represents a very low priority traffic. Now, the values will depend again, it depends, let's say if you're using a frame delay based network, you have a frame delay header, and inside that frame delay header, you have an option of discard eligibility, and that discard eligibility will define again the priority of the traffic. Uh, if you're using a frame PLS frames, again, inside that MPLS frame, you have an experimental bits, and again, it is going to be three bits again, which gives the same values what we have in the in the class of service again. Now, when you talk about any layer two marking, it can be on a switch network, or it can be your frame delay discard eligibility, or it can be a MPLS experimental bits. You have a seven, eight different values we get, and in that we'll be using something around zero to five. Five is referred as a very high priority traffic, whereas zero is referred as the least priority traffic. Now the next thing we have something called layer three marking. Now inside the layer three marking, we have two different categories again. Now layer three marking is done from router to router especially, router to router based on the layer three information. And the router is responsible again to convert the layer two marking into a layer three marking as it goes over the router network. Like take an example, you have a LAN, it's receiving a marking with a layer two marking, probably the router is responsible for converting into equivalent layer three marking again. Now the original TCP IP standard defines eight bits in the form of type of service. We have something called a type of service field inside your, uh, inside your TCP IP packet. And it's going to define somewhere around eight bits. And that eight bits uh, we can use to, to mark the specific traffic. And based on that eight bits, we have two categories of marking we can use. Either we can use an IP address residence value and or we can use something called DSCP. Now IP address residence value out of eight bits, it's going to use only the first three bits will be used for marking and it's going to generate the same eight numbers like from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, same as your class of service, layer to markings. Now the values what we get with the IP presence value, it's going to be the same, same combinations like what we discussed in the layer two. Like uh, if you use a value of zero, zero is the least preferred traffic, whereas phi is preferred as a very high priority traffic. Now naming will slightly change when you compare the layer two or layer three markings, but at the end again, the six and seven are used for network control traffic, like routing protocol, messages, EHR, POSP of messages, something like that. Now to verify these values, we can we can always go to the command prompt and either we can match based on the access list. I can say ACL permit IP any any. And then if you use an extend ACL, probably here you'll find some DSCP values where I can say DSCP value. If you use question mark here, probably you'll find all the, all the possible options. Now either you can define the DSCP value in the form of decimal values here. AF11, issued forwarding options with the equivalent binary, class selector, the backward compatible with IP presence values, or expired forwarding option here. Now, even you can match, like let's say if I give access list 112 permit IP any any, we can also match based on the IP presence values. I think we need to use IP presence. And then if you're using a presence value, you'll get seven different options, eight different options, zero to seven where you will find the marking from zero to five here. You can see six and seven for the control traffic. Now, similar way, either you can match them in the ACLs or inside the class map, let's say I'm going to create a class map, match access group 1112. Inside the policy map, let's say I'm applying the policy map CCIE, define the class, class HTTP. We can always say set presence value and if you want to specifically do the marking, we can define a class map, which is going to differentiate the traffic. And then we can apply some marking value by using set presence value. And we can define what set of marking has to be applied for HTTP traffic. Or even we can define some DSCP values. 
based on our options here. Now this is how the marking can be done by using a policy map and inside the policy map we can use a set option set DSCP or set precedence to do the marking.